Okay, let's start. Thank you all for joining. My name is Dvir, and I will talk to you today about number string conversions. So let's say we're given this task. Uh, maybe you've given something like this in one of your first job interviews. <clears throat> the task is to <coughs> sorry. The task is to um, write a function that gets two uh, two numbers represented as strings, converts them, convert them to numbers, adds adds the, those two numbers, and convert the result back to a string and returns that to the caller. The numbers can be integral or floating points, um, depending on the what the user will choose. So, how do we go about implementing this task? So, uh, C++ has many ways to do that, as we'll see today. And uh, the first one, which was introduced, uh, came from C. This is A2I. In 1978, Dennis Ritchie and Brian Kernighan published a well-known book, which is known by the initials K and R, which presented the C language. And the, uh, already in the first edition of this book, they had this function uh, called A2I, not to be confused with the C11 algorithm uh, IOTA. So here is the function as it was uh, written in KNR first edition. You can see that the C syntax has changed a bit since then. Uh, for example, the uh, type of the parameter is written after the function uh, parentheses. <clears throat> so uh, what this function does is it gets a character array. It reads, <clears throat> uh, it uh, skips all the spaces up front. Then it checks if the sign is there, whether it is a plus or a minus. Remembers the sign and then uh, digit by digit multiplies the number by 10 and adds the next digit, and in the end, multiplies by the uh, sign we read at first. So pretty straightforward algorithm. And uh, this is the algorithm as it appears in the muscle library, which is a, a modern C runtime library. As you can see, it hasn't changed much. Uh, the only difference is that here they use functions for checking space and uh, if the character is a digit. But basically, it still runs on your computers even today. Now, regarding floating points, uh, this is from the second uh, edition of KNR. Here, the syntax is already uh, after the standardization of C. And uh, basically, it is pretty much the same. The only difference is that we uh, do this loop twice, one for the fractional part and one for the integral part. And we have the, the, the digit, uh, the, sorry, the decimal point uh, in the middle there. And now notice that this function cannot handle uh, nouns, non numbers, and infinities. Uh, this is because function, <clears throat> this function uh, didn't gain that support until the C99 standard. OK, so this are, these are the different overloads we have in the C standard. Uh, notice that there are some missing, like there's no overlo overload for outputting float, only double. And there are no unsigned versions. And uh, for, the <clears throat> for the opposite part, for converting from numbers to uh, strings, KNR had this function called I2A. Again, not to be confused with IOTA. Um, and basically, it does the same algorithm we've seen before, only in reverse order. And indeed, it needs to reverse the string uh, before returning it, because it generates the digits uh, in the reverse order. 
Uh, so this function was not standardized uh, by the C committee for some reason, uh, but it is available, uh, for example, in the Microsoft C runtime library. Okay, so now uh, we're finally getting to implement our task. So uh, because diff uh, the, the different overloads have different names for each uh, numeric type, we need to repeat the implementation for each numeric type. Here I did it for eights and doubles. But anyway, as you can see, the interface is pretty straight, uh, straightforward, very intuitive. Uh, we can use const variables. Uh, and uh, this is pretty readable. But not uh, generic, unfortunately. What about error handling? So there are a number of errors which can occur when we do number string conversions. Here I've written the main ones. So it is possible that the string you get doesn't contain any number, so you can't do any conversion. It is possible that the number does not fit the range you're converting to. And when converting from number to strings, if you give it a, a sized buffer, it is possible that the number will overflow this buffer because it is larger. And also, like with any function call, it is possible that the user just pass you in all the arguments uh, for any reason. So uh, A2I, unf uh, unfortunately, that does, does not have any error handling whatsoever. If you give it a junk, you'll get zero. And assuming the zero is a legitimate uh, result in your algorithm, you won't notice that. And in the case of uh, out of range input, you'll get some number. You don't know which one. But uh, you won't get any other notification uh, that you had any error. And this is, of course, uh, a big problem. So to conclude, the uh, x to y uh, family of functions have uh, some uh, benefits, um, some pros. Uh, as we see, the, the API is very simple and intuitive. It is efficient. It doesn't do any hidden heap allocations or, or whatever. But uh, the main disadvantage is the lack of error handling. And as we've seen, IOTA, uh, uh, sorry, I2A <laughs> Uh, is not uh, standardized. OK, let's move on. So uh, during the standardization of C, uh, there are a number of functions which added which were not in the original KNR uh, book. Uh, those functions mainly came from the development of Unix, which was uh, the main driven behind the C language. And uh, one such example is str2x, which has been standardized. Uh, so this does basically the same um, job as A to I and A to F, but it has uh, more overloads. It has a richer interface. You can give it a pointer uh, to tell you where the parsing has ended, assuming you want to keep parsing this input string for other uh, inputs. And uh, you can tell it uh, which base you want to uh, convert from. Uh, the base can be between 2 and 36, because the English, the English language only has uh, 26 characters, plus the 10 digits. Uh, th this gives you the maximal uh, base. All right, and uh, so let's, uh, there's no um, opposite direction for str to x in the standard, so we'll still use i to a and f to a for the number to string conversion. But here we can use uh, str to i to l, sorry, and, and to str to d in the floating point case. Uh, as in C, you don't have uh, default arguments. You have to pass this uh, l and, and the default base, which is 10. Uh, but other than that, again, it's, it is pretty much the same implementation. Uh, I will appreciate if we can uh, keep the questions till the end of the talk. Sorry about that. Um, that was what I've been told to do. Um, all right. So, uh, but in the case of error handling, str to x functions are much better. If you give it uh, a number which doesn't fit the uh, range of the numeric type, uh, it will set error null uh, to be equal to e range, and it will return the maximal 
uh, number for this type. And in the case uh, there was no conversion possible, you can uh, check it by checking the pointer you've, tr you've uh, given to it for the end uh, position. If it is equal to the start of the string, it means it, it, it didn't do any conversion. So this is the conclusion uh, regarding str2x, uh, similar to a2i, only uh, with error handling. All right. Uh, the last uh, C function we uh, will uh, cover today, our formula functions, is the sprintf and scanf functions. Um, so th th those functions are not specifically uh, for numbers and, and number string conversions, but like any uh, I.O. functions, basically, when you uh, print a, a number, basically you've, uh, you convert it to a string and then prints that. And uh, likewise, when you read uh, a number from the input uh, device, you read it as a string and then convert it. So uh, those I.O. functions can also be used for uh, this uh, purpose. Um, so if you read the abstract, I mentioned that if we'll have time, we'll also look at other languages. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we'll have time, but uh, at least I have this slide uh, showing Algol 68 um, printf, and the reason is that uh, Algol 68 invented printf. This is the, the first language which, which uh, used this name. And as you can see, the syntax is, hasn't changed much between uh, this and C. Only here, the, the format flags are written between the string uh, uh, parts, and not in line like in uh, C. All right, so these are the different overloads we have in the C standard uh, for both sprintf and uh, scanf. I assume uh, most of you have, have used these functions before. Um, the underscore s uh, versions, the secure versions, uh, came from uh, ma the Microsoft runtime library. Uh, but unfortunately, other than them, uh, no one has implemented it. Uh, and uh, there's even a proposal to remove it from the C standard. And even the Microsoft implementation does not confirm to what was standardized in the end. So you can't actually write uh, portable code using those functions, unfortunately. Uh, anyway, here we implement uh, our task using uh, sprintf and scanf. Uh, for integrals, we use the uh, percent uh, %d format flag. And for uh, doubles, we use lg. Uh, we also give it, uh, can give it uh, a different uh, precision uh, with this uh, uh, syntax. All right, uh, this is, uh, if you don't remember, all the printf and, and sprintf, consequently, has many different ways to configure the output. Uh, I've written uh, most of them here, uh, but I won't go over it uh, one by one. All right, in, in the case of error handling, uh, in the SKNF case, it is like str2x. Um, the return value tells you how many arguments it uh, parsed successfully. If it didn't, it will be zero. In the case of out of range, it will set erno. But for the opposite case for sprintf, anyone uh, sees a bug here? Yeah, Shaha? Yeah, but it is, it's a, the size of int. Right, so sprintf writes the null terminator at the end of the string, and I didn't have room for that. Thank you. So to conclude, the SXF family of uh, functions, they're very customizable. As we've seen, there are many different formatting flags you can set. Again, it does not do any memory allocations. But it lacks a bit in the error handling case. Uh, the format flags only support uh, those three bases you see here. 
Uh, I'm not sure how many of you used base 27, for example, but uh, binary, I think, is very missing. And uh, the code is less readable than uh, what we've seen before. Um, we, we can't do, immediately see that we do, uh, we do convert from numbers to strings and back uh, using this. All right, so that was uh, C. In 1985, Bjarne Strustrup published the first uh, version of the IO stream library. Um, it was for the second edition of C, the first C++ compiler. And uh, during the standardization of C++, uh, string string was added to it. It was not the first version. Uh, by the way, the code you, you see here in the tweet uh, by uh, Vladimir uh, only compiles from C++ 11. And this is because C++ 11 added support for uh, our value uh, IO streams with the um, shift uh, left operator. All right, so uh, those are the different uh, string streams we have in the standard. Uh, same, uh, same as the uh, std string, there's uh, the, the base um, template is called the basic string stream, and it is uh, specialized for char, and this, uh, the specialization is called string stream. There's also the white characters uh, specializations, which I uh, won't go over today. Uh, but there's also i string stream and o string stream, which only can do one of the directions, either inputs or outputs. And usually it is better if you only do one of the, the directions to use the, those uh, versions to protect you from accidentally calling uh, the opposite operators. All right, so uh, yeah, let's uh, implement our task using string stream. And now finally, we are C++, so we can write generic code. All right, so the code is templated on some uh, numeric type T. We have uh, some default precision in the case the user uh, does not want uh, to customize it. Uh, and now for the input part, we use iString stream. We feed it the input strings and then parse the number out of it using the extraction or shift right operators. Then we add the result and uh, insert it to an uh, output uh, O stream stream. And we also set uh, the requested precision and we request it to output uh, the fixed format. Uh, but in the end, to get the string back, we have to call this .str function and copy the string from the string stream back to the caller. So there are uh, three string copies in this code. Uh, if we will get in the bonus slides, I will show you how to uh, write a similar code without those copies. Uh, in the case of error handling, uh, it is quite good. You can call the dot .fail uh, function to check if the stream is in a failed state. And uh, if you want, you can also get exceptions by calling uh, the dot exceptions member function. And if you call that, you will get uh, this exception type uh, on every failure, and then you can uh, check uh, its message. So, okay, so you'll get an exception both for the uh, no conversion possible and the uh, uh, out of range uh, case. Uh, buffer overflows are not really possible when you use a std string because it grows uh, as uh, required. So to conclude, uh, string stream, uh, it is customizable using the, those functions as we've seen like uh, set um, precision and fix and so on. Uh, all those functions are in the IO manip header. Uh, we can finally write a generic code do not repeat ourselves. Uh, it is secure. It uh, reports on errors. But the downsides are that 
It is pretty verbose with all those uh, shift left and shift rights. Uh, it requires uh, copies, which I didn't mention here, as we've seen, but uh, since it also has to uh, take the current locale in consideration, uh, it requires a lock on every um, on every insertion and extraction, and also the format flags themselves are uh, kept as a state in the stream, which means that if it is shared between threads, it will have to lock. And again, only those uh, three bases are uh, supported. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's move on. So uh, the fr uh, starting from C++ uh, 11, um, there's uh, what, what is called modern C++. Uh, C++ so C++ 11 also, also brought with it new ways to convert from strings to numbers and back. So uh, the first function we'll see is std to string. Uh, this is a function for converting from numbers uh, to strings, as the name suggests. And it has a pretty uh, long list of uh, overloads. And for the, yeah, so before, before that, uh, a question for you uh, from this uh, tweet by uh, Vladimir again. Uh, anyone can tell me what is the output of this code here? How many think it is the first one? No one? No one? The second one? Also no one? The third answer? The first? The third, you see, you say? All right. <laughs> so at least uh, some people thought that they know. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the, the correct answer is the, the second one, the all zeros answer. Uh, and this is because uh, the default precision for st to, st to string is six. And after six uh, zeros, it stops uh, printing. All right? So it doesn't do the uh, rounding up. All right. So the, the opposite direction, we have also in, uh, from C11, uh, the ST, S2X um, family of functions. It is uh, named similarly to the STRX from C. Uh, so uh, it has a different overload for each, uh, or different name for each type. Again, you can see there are some numeric types which are missing here, like unsigned int. Uh, there's even uh, a, a library. Uh, uh, bug uh, for it, but it was decided not to edit because uh, they're afraid it would cause um, ambiguous calls. Uh, but uh, the, the main downside of uh, S2, S2X uh, functions are that not many people are, are aware of them. Uh, even Arvid, which is a well-known C++ uh, um, speaker, uh, did not hear about it until 2018. So uh, there's that. Let's implement our task using C++11 functions. Uh, now, uh, in my test, this is the most uh, readable API we've seen uh, so far. We simply call either uh, S2I or S2D, depending on the type, and then uh, as the uh, numbers and call to string with that. Uh, but there's no way to, to customize the, the output. Uh, as we've seen, it only has the default uh, precision, uh, which is six, uh, and also uh, only the fixed um, format. Uh, in the case of error handling, it uh, will throw you an exception. Um, on any uh, case of failure. So to conclude, the C++11 functions, <clears throat> S2X and 2String, 
Uh, the API is uh, very simple. Uh, it will work if you want, if you know you 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 will get a, a number which is uh, not very small or very, or very large. <clears throat> uh, assuming SSO, which uh, doesn't know what, not know what SSO means. Yeah, so SSO is the small string optimization, which means that uh, strings today have uh, some buffer inside them to avoid locations. So assuming your numbers is, uh, for example, in glibc, it is 23 characters. So if your numbers is in this uh, range, you won't, you won't get uh, heap allocations when you construct uh, a string. So uh, as we'll see in the end, uh, it helps those functions to be quite uh, fast. Uh, again, like uh, string stream, it uh, uh, takes the current locale in consideration. Uh, but it doesn't report where it uh, end the parsing, as we've seen with uh, strx and uh, str2x. Sorry, yeah, and it is not customizable. And uh, unfortunately, you cannot write generic code using it because the different names for uh, S2, s2x uh, functions. Now, um, when you convert floating points to strings and back, there are certain properties uh, you would like to have. <clears throat> so let's say we're getting this number here in, in the middle. <coughs> Sorry. So let's, let's say <clears throat> we're getting this uh, number in the middle, and we, we want to, <coughs> sorry about that, we want to convert it to a string. Now, the floating point numbers, uh, as you might know, are not contiguous in the real uh, axis. Um, so there are jumps between them, because not every real number is representable by the IEEE uh, 745 or whatever standard. <clears throat> and in fact, in 32-bit uh, uh, floating points, uh, these are the two numbers which are closest to the numbers in to the number in the middle. And so, let's consider the range uh, which is closer to the input number than its neighbors. And let's say we will convert this number to this string uh, down below. 0 0.1, seven zeros, and then one. Now, if we convert breadth from this string, we will get the original number back, right? Because it is closer to, uh, to it than to uh, its uh, two neighbors. So we can print this uh, string, which is shorter than the string of all the, uh, the input number, and identify this, this input uh, with no problem. But in this case, there's also a shorter string which is in the same range, which is just 0 0.1. So ideally, the converting from this floating point number to a string will give us just 0 0.1, and that's it. And again, because we can identify the original input using just this short string. And also, uh, there are cases where there are two shortest strings in this uh, same range, like in this example. And here, the, the ideal conversion will give us the one which is actually closer to the input. In this case, the one ends, ending with uh, six, and not, in seven, not with uh, seven. OK, so to conclude, the ideal floating point conversion will give us the shortest string which is uh, close to the input number uh, and not to its uh, neighbors. And so the, the quest for uh, such a conversion came to uh, the new functions in C++ 17 standard, which are uh, written in the char -conv header. Those, are, those functions are two chars and from chars, as, we've seen, as we'll see in a minute. Uh, the problem was that uh, it was really hard to implement those functions 
uh, as written in the standard. And uh, as, there's uh, an excellent talk by uh, STL for Microsoft, uh, Stephen Lowey, uh, from one of the CPP cons, where he goes over the, the implementation of, of Charkov uh, in the Microsoft C++ uh, library. Uh, so I uh, recommend uh, seeing this talk. But uh, fortunately, they did succeed to implement it. All right, so uh, from Charles, and two chars have many different overloads. I've uh, instead written them as a template to have it fit in one slide. Uh, but they're not actually a template in the standard. So there are two uh, basic versions, one for integrals and one for floating points. Uh, again, you can uh, customize the base uh, from 2 to 36. And for floating points, <clears throat> you can ask it for a specific uh, representation, either um, fixed, exponential, general, which general gives you the shortest one between fixed and exponential. And uh, there's also hexadecimal floating points, which you can uh, request. The return value is a struct, as you see up here. It returns you uh, I, both the pointer to where it uh, stopped parsing, if you want to uh, continue parsing the string, and an error code in case there was an error. This is the opposite direction uh, from numbers to strings, which is called two chars. Uh, again, I've written it as a template. There's the integral version and <clears throat> the three floating, floating point versions. Uh, the reason is this. If you don't pass it a precision, it will output the shortest string, as we've discussed earlier. If you do give it a precision, it will use it, this precision and output this number of di digits after the decimal point, even if it is longer than the ideal one. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I did mention what, what you pass to the to the two, two chars and front chars function are not std string, but pointers to, ca to characters, so a range of, of characters. <clears throat> there is a proposal to uh, also add the overloads for accepting string views, which are also a C++17 type. All right, so here we implement our task using, um, using two chars and from chars. So the, the implementation is not very readable, unfortunately. This is because of the dot data and dot uh, size calls, which we use to get the pointers from the input strings. If the proposal for uh, accepting string views will be accepted, the code will be much uh, readable. Um, yeah, but other than that, is pretty straightforward. Uh, as you've seen, I, I, I've used um, to get uh, the end here. Um, sorry, I forgot the name of the, the feature uh, there. Uh, yeah. All right. Structured binding, thank you. Uh, I've used structured bindings. Uh, to get the end to resize the string, uh, the, the result string, uh, to end where the parsing has actually ended. And I've ignored the error condition because it, this is the slide where. <laughs> All right, but if I do want to check the error code, I, of course, uh, can do it. Uh, in the case of um, no conversion possible, the error code will be uh, this invalid argument. And there's also an error code for out of range and for uh, value too large, which means that uh, instead of overflowing the input buffer, it just stops at the end and reports value too large. OK, and if we try this with Sprinter, for example, 
uh, we would get a uh, buffer overflow. Yeah, I'm not sure with seven there, but uh, maybe it should have been three. OK. Oh, no, OK, there's eight, eight digits and only seven places, right. OK, so uh, to conclude, two chars and four chars are uh, very efficient, uh, as we'll see uh, later on. They report uh, error code. They don't throw exceptions. Uh, this is to, to be able to use them in embedded, embedded platforms and so on. Uh, they are customizable. You can write generic code with them. Um, the only dice lines is, is that uh, they're uh, pretty verbose, but as we've seen, there are proposals to, to fix that. Uh, it, it, it does require some manual memory management, but as we've seen, you can use std strings with those functions if you do want to. All right, so now we're getting to the last uh, published standard so far, C++20, which brought std format uh, to us. Uh, as Tamir has uh, pointed out, it uh, hopefully won't format your uh, hard drive, at least not intentionally. All right, so this is uh, the different uh, functions in the ICD uh, format family. So there's the basic uh, STD format, uh, which for those who don't know is like printf only type safe. So it is a variadic template, and we'll see an example uh, how, to, how, you, how we use it uh, in a minute. Uh, so the first argument is some formatting string, and then you give it uh, a list of arguments. The default just returns you an std string. You can also write the output to some output iterator. And you can also write the output to, to some sized buffer. So n is the size of the output buffer, and it will stop if it will uh, exhaust this, uh, this buffer. Uh, the main advantage of uh, std format, it, it, uh, it is that by default, it doesn't uh, use the current locale. But if you do want, you can. You have different overloads, which accept uh, whatever lo locale you want to use. So this helps the default uh, implementations to be much faster. Now, regarding the opposite direction, there is this proposal uh, for std scan. Um, yeah, so we'll jump right to the example. So std scan is like scanf, again, only type safe. Uh, so this proposal is P1729. It still hasn't been accepted, but hopefully we will see it either in 23 or 26. Assuming it will be accepted, this is how you would use it. So the formatting strings here are using the Python syntax with the curly braces. So each pair of curly braces is a placeholder for one of the arguments. So since we have only one argument in each case, except the, the last one, which uh, also gets the precision, we only use uh, one pair of uh, braces. OK, and again, the, the code is pretty similar to, to sprintf and scanf. We provide the. Uh, the numbers as uh, output params to scan. It will set them by parsing the input string. And then we use format to convert it or convert the, the result of the addition back to, to string. Um, 
Yeah, so here, because I've used this special uh, syntax for giving the, giving the permission, I won't be able to use the same syntax for integrals and floating points. Uh, if I did use the, f the default precision, I could have written a generic implementation. Uh, regarding error handling, um, Oh, yeah, before error handling, sorry. Uh, as we've seen, we need to uh, use output params for setting the, this uh, L and R variables by calling uh, scan. Personally, I don't like output params. I much prefer uh, to get the values uh, back from the functions. And uh, the SDN library, which is the reference implementation for STD scan, has those functions called scan value, and those functions return the output instead of uh, passing it as an output param. So uh, currently, you can only use the library. You don't have it yet in the standard. And if you do, I recommend you call those functions. Uh, regarding error handling, <clears throat> again, the, the functions return error codes. Uh, this is the error code for um, invalid value. No, no conversion was possible. There's also one for out of range. Um, in the uh, buffer overflow case, you can get buffer overflow if you call format2 with uh, a pointer to a character, um, a pointer to a, to a character. So I recommend you to call format 2n instead, and then pass the. I'll, I'll just scroll it. Yeah, and then pass the size of your buffer, and then you won't get uh, an overflow. It will uh, stop and report that uh, the size which it would have written if it had enough uh, space would be eight, but you only passed it seven. What? No, uh, I'm not sure if it writes uh, an alternator or not. I think not. So maybe it would have been eight. I need to check it. OK. So to conclude, uh, scanner format, uh, again, they don't do any heap allocations. Uh, they are safe. They report error codes. Uh, you can write generic code with them, but not in all cases. Um, but like Sprintf and, and Scanf, uh, they're somewhat verbose when you only do number string conversions. All right, so it's now time for uh, benchmark benchmarks to to compare the the performance of all the functions we've seen. So I've ran some benchmarks using the quickbench.com uh, uh, website. Uh, and in this case, I've ran all those functions we've seen on uh, randomly generated uh, floating point numbers, converting them to a string. And I've run it uh, for each number of, um, of, of precision uh, digits from 1 to 17. Okay, so the the purple one is two chars. It is uh, usually the fast when we get to the, the high precisions. And the lower ones, uh, it is a D2A, which is not in the standard. And uh, FNT, the, the STD format uh, reference implementation, is not uh, way uh, far. Uh, as you can see, the, the two strings, the, the C11 two strings, uh, is also not that bad. It is even be better than uh, Sprintf in some cases. Uh, for the opposite direction, the results are uh, uh, pretty much the same. Uh, if anyone wants, I can uh, send you links uh, later on if you want to uh, dig into those uh, 
charts. Uh, for the integral part case, uh, again, two charts is uh, better, is best. Uh, STD format, not far behind. And two string is better, again, than sprintf, even though it, ha it uses STD string. But as we've seen, because of SSO, it doesn't do uh, heap allocations uh, usually. Uh, the IO streams are way far off. Uh, regarding numput, if we'll have time, it is <laughs> in the bonus slides, but I don't think we will. Uh, this is the opposite direction for integrals. Numbers are pretty much the same. The uh, SCL library has not been optimized as well as uh, the FMT library, but so I guess there's, there's still uh, room to, for optimizations there. All right, so to conclude, uh, I've uh, written this uh, table with all the different functions we've seen here. Uh, this is a subjective uh, comparison. This is a, a my opinion regarding how, how I see the, the pros and cons of each uh, function or each uh, way for converting from numbers to strings. Uh, the efficiency uh, row uh, down below, uh, one is the best and lower is, is better. Anyway. Uh, all right, so this brings us to the end of the talk. Uh, I want to thank first uh, my wife for letting me work on it. Uh, to the late hours. <laughs> I want to thank all the people whose tweets I uh, borrowed and uh, for the nice uh, birds uh, images here. So uh, thank you all. <laughs>